Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. I am John Denning, the Product Line Manager for Scott Safety's NFPA AirPack SCBA. Today's, uh, the purpose of today's session is to bring awareness to the fire service concerning the upcoming changes to the NFPA 1981 and 1982 standards. NFPA 1981 is for open circuit self-contained breathing apparatus for emergency services and NFPA 1982 is for personal alert safety systems or PASS devices. Typically, the NFPA 1981 standards are revised on a five-year cycle. This cycle was an exception as the committee wanted to include new test protocols that took a little while to solidify. The 1982 standard follows, uh, or following the same timing as the 1981 standard due to the close relationship that PASS devices have with the SCBA. Because of the slip cycle, the standards we marked as the 2013 edition. The issuance date, or the date of when the standard was completed, was November 27th of 2012, and the st standard has been published. Print copies will be available on NFPA's website on March 2nd, 2013. Once the standard is fully implemented, SCBA manufacturers are no longer allowed to ship product labeled to the previous editions of the standards. In the new edition of the standard goes into effect on August 13 or August 31st, 2013. That means that the last day any SCBA manufacturer can ship product labeled to the 2007 standard would be August 30th of 2013. So let's take a look now at the 20th, uh, 2013 edition changes. The most noticeable change that your fire department will be, or to your fire department, will be the low pressure alarm set points. In previous editions of the standard, the end of service time indicator, or EOSD, was set at 25% of the cylinder pressure remaining. In the next edition, the alarm set point will be at 33 to 38% of remaining cylinder air. This was done to provide SCBA users with more reserve air in the respirator. The next change will be to include parameters for the performance uh, requirements for the optional EBSS or emergency breathing support systems. Prior to this edition of the standards, there were no requirements for buddy breathers, and in fact, NIOSH never recognized the use of EBSS systems. That will no longer be the case with the release of the 2013 edition of the 1981 standard. The intrinsic safety standards uh, went to or uh, landed on the sixth edition of the UL standards. Uh, this was a carryover from the uh, 2007 edition standard. And then lastly, the, for the SCBA that, for SCBA that have a high, uh, wired HUD system and a quick disconnect, the user may not be able to disconnect the HUD wire while maintaining their air connection. For the face pieces, uh, there were two tests uh, that were, were added due to the focus of improving the durability of the face piece. Uh, the first is a high heat and flame test for the face piece. The complete SCBA is heat soaked at 500 degrees for five minutes, then exposed to a 10 second flame impingement test, which is approximately 1800 degrees. Following the flame and heat exposures, the SCBA and face piece must survive a six inch drop test. Throughout the test, the SCBA is breathed on by a machine at the NIOSH breathing rate of 40 liters per minute and the complete SCBA must maintain positive pressure for a period of 24 minutes. The second test is a radiant heat load test. The SC SCBA's face piece will be exposed to a radiant heat load of 15 kilowatts per meter squared for five minutes while the SCBA is being breathed on at the NIOSH breathing rate of 40 liters per minute. The radiant heat panel is removed and the complete SCBA again must survive a six inch drop test. The complete SCBA again must maintain positive pressure for a period of 24 minutes. The committee also introduced a new test protocol for voice intelligibility. In the past, the tests were subjective in nature and difficult to have repeatable results. In this edition of the standard, the protocol is known as the Speech Transmissibility Index. Uh, this was done by having a speaker in a head form with a face piece donned. 1.5 meters across the sound chamber is a microphone connected to a computer. Specific tones are pumped through the speaker and received by the microphone. While the tests are being conducted, a background noise is introduced. The computer interprets the results, giving a score. The minimum passing score is 0.55. To simulate the worst 
case scenarios, all manufacturers must pass the test with their electronic amplifiers installed on the face piece but not powered on. This represents the possibility of the batteries not working and the SCBA, SCBA wear still being capable of clear communication. For electronic amplifiers, the min minimum passing score is 0 0.60 while the background noise is increased. The 1982 standard now requires a universal pass sound. This means that all pass sounds on the fire ground, ground will be similar regardless of the brand of SCBA in use. And again, they are uh, using the sixth edition of the UL 913 standard uh, for intrinsic safety. Thank you for your time today. It is our hope at Scott Safety that this session was a benefit